And I felt like what God spoke to me coming back from Brazil. I was just in Brazil, five cities in five days. And uh, many, many, many flights later. And I felt like what God spoke to me, he said to me, I want the spillover to be on Sunday. And I feel like there's an overflow from some of the things that God's, God has done in Brazil that I believe God wants to overflow here on Sunday. And I believe this falls under the principle of what I call impartation, what the Bible calls impartation. And we see this throughout Scripture. We see that um, God uses moments, He uses people, He uses situations to actually impart and deposit things in our life that establish us stronger, that, that, that build us up stronger. If you have any history with me at all, you have probably heard me talk about this over the years because I, I feel like in much of the sense, many of the things that I've had to or got to experience in life and in leadership have been a direct result of the many people that have been around my life that have, have imparted and deposited in my life. And because of those deposits in my life, I've been able to make significant withdrawals and I've been able to grow and exceed even my own expectation of what God can do in and through me. And I'm nothing special in the room. Everybody in this room has a call, has a purpose. The only thing that defines and separates what people think is special from not special is willingness. Willingness to look like a fool, willingness to step out, willingness to make yourself available and vulnerable. That's the only difference. Now, everybody has the same responsibility and call, but everyone has the same uh, uh, call to have purpose, to have a plan from God, to fulfill that plan. Do you believe that? You believe that? And so I believe this morning that God is going to deposit something powerful in your life. He's going to deposit something that you're going to be able to make withdrawals from. And there's a principle in the scripture that's very clear, very clear, called stewardship. That the only way we grow in the kingdom is to steward what God has given us. So, many, uh, so much of the Canadian church, the reason why we're stuck is because we don't give out what we've received. We don't release what we've received. We keep, we hoard. That's North America in general. We keep, we keep, we keep. What defines the people that really break through from those that do not are those that are willing to not just keep what they've received but to give it away. And this is a principle that Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. He said, freely give as you freely received. At the very end, at the very end of the commission saying, when you go, preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Talk about the kingdom, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. Freely as you have received, freely give. I was just talking about to, a, to a someone that I'm, I'm mentoring this morning that's just come out of uh, a, a, a different, very different lifestyle. He's a brand new believer, brand new business guy leading a new believers group on a wild track, super hungry for God, super hungry. And just last night he had his first demonic encounter where he was he was helping somebody they started manifesting a demon i texted him this morning he's freaking out he's like what do i do he's like this last night was crazy i'm like congratulations you just graduated because this is the kingdom this is a new believer and the reason why he's experiencing this stuff is because he's been in this this cyclical lifestyle for the last two months, three months, where he's been giving. He's been receiving from God and then giving, receiving and then giving. And as a result, the kingdom, the kingdom touches down on people like that. Because that's, that's a principle of the kingdom, to steward what you've received. If you never share your faith outside of a church context, you will never grow up. You will never grow up. If you only keep your faith to yourself and never talk about it, never share about it, never, never give out to those that are in need of it, you will never grow up into the person you were called to grow up. God, God has a plan for you. You could be a 30-fold person, a 60-fold person, or a 100-fold person. 
You can produce 30-fold in your life, produce 60-fold in your life, or produce 100-fold. How many want to produce 100-fold? I, have, I believe everybody in this room can produce 100-fold of what God's called you to produce. But you have to steward what God's given you freely as you have received to freely give constantly. You are like a recycle bin. It comes in, it comes out. That's the nature of the kingdom. He comes, he comes, he gives you a word so you can give the word. He tells you what to do so you can do the thing he tells you to do. Right? Willingness. You know, and, and I want to share a little bit in a very brief way some of the spirit of what I was sharing in Brazil because I was in five different cities, five different nights, and uh, incredible things happened. I can't count I cannot count. There was probably over, at least over 80 significant mir uh, miracles and healings that took place, let alone the, the, some of the wild prophetic ministry that took place in uh, many of the, the different cities. One of the nights I was at a, on a, on a, at a, what it was kind of like a, a hub to gather students from around various universities. It's actually called the Dunamis Farm. And uh, they gather, they have, they have a school there, they have people that give their lives there, like missions there, they, they live there. But where I was specifically, they gathered over 500 university leaders that lead small groups on different, on different universities, represented 500 universities from around Brazil, from around Europe, and I think even some Central America, and they all gather for seven nights every year at the beginning of January to be encouraged to go back to their campuses to lead their groups because they're seeing a move of God on their university campuses. And man, these, ki these university students, were like leaders, they were like hungry. The meeting went from 8 o'clock until 2 a.m. 8 p.m. until 2 a.m. I left the meeting after I prayed, literally laid hands on 500 people. I left the meeting at 1245 and they were still worshiping without music at 2 a.m. It was wild. The host said they've only ever seen this happen three times of this nature. And I was so amazed what God was doing. But not only was I seeing God do amazing things, it was like always, it's always so encouraging to me when God does amazing things. It always makes me in awe of what God does. I've had the privilege of traveling around the world over the years and to see and taste and experience so many different things. And sometimes I feel like God, what about Ottawa? What about Ottawa? But I know God's not done with Ottawa. I know God has a plan to do amazing things in Ottawa. And you're a part of that plan. But all you have to do is be willing to receive what God wants to give you and then release it to the culture. I mean, the things that we saw, it was crazy. I mean, sinusitis. We saw a leg grow out. We saw broken bones, spinal conditions, a hernia disappear, eyes open up. We had two people, separate people, break their prescription glasses in the meeting because God was healing them. Inflammation, feet, ankles. I mean, so many different like ailments. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of knee injuries and and back injuries and vertebrae, muscle, muscle tissue reforming on people's bodies. I mean, it was crazy, miracle after miracle. And I couldn't even remember half of them because it was Portuguese, and I was getting the translation in my ear. Like, at least over eighty miracles, at least. And I just believe that God is, is wanting to do a few things this morning. One, I want to bring back full circle something that I've been sharing really since September. And it continues. And when I was coming back from Brazil in August, God spoke to me, said, Sean, the body of Christ is moving into a John 11, 11 season. I heard it so clear. John 11, 11. I didn't know what verse 11 was. I knew what chapter 11 was. I didn't know what verse 11 was. I knew it was the story of Lazarus being raised from the dead on the fourth day after being dead for four days. Mary and Martha, sister, sisters of Lazarus, friends of Jesus. Jesus says in John chapter 11, verse 11, he says, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go wake him up. And I love that because it speaks to so many things for me that often what we feel like is dead, God just sees as asleep. 
what we just feel like is dead in our lives, dead dreams, dead hopes. Man, I, I'm never going to fulfill my call. Like, I just missed it. I missed the boat. It's long gone. It feels dead. God just says it's asleep. And he's going to wake him, He's going to wake you up. He's going to wake it up in your life. And I love this because it says in the verse after, in verse 14, or ver- verses after verse 14, he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Then said this in verse 15, and for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. What an amazing, powerful statement. Jesus said, I'm glad I wasn't there. You ever felt like you've been like super delayed in your life, like God wasn't there when you wanted him to be to rescue you out of the thing that you feel like had died? Jesus said, I'm glad I wasn't there because for your sakes, you're going to believe. Your delays in your life are simply set up so you can believe more in God's promise. So sometimes things are delayed in life so he can upgrade you, but you can't see the upgrade yet. But then when you get there, you realize, oh my gosh, thank God I waited because I learned so much in the process. And I love it. Jesus is saying to, to you to this morning, I believe this, for your sakes, I'm glad I didn't answer the prayer when you prayed it. Because you would have missed your upgrade. I could have gave you something. I could have gave you something good, but I have something great. So he'll hold, on, he'll hold things out for a certain period of time so that he can upgrade you. You're in a waiting season right now. He's delaying some things for a reason. And I'm thinking about this again. I can't shake these things. You know, some of you are like, well, I've heard Sean share this before. Yes, I'm resharing it because we can't forget the word of the Lord in seasons that we're in because they actually prepare and frame the way we have to build and the way we have to position our lives. God is waking up us. He's waking up the church. It says this in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Paul said to Timothy, Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. This speaks to something was deposited in Timothy as a young leader. Something was deposited into Timothy by the laying on of hands, by the, by the prophetic words. Something was deposited on the inside. There was an impartation that actually established Timothy in strength. And Paul is saying, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't neglect. Don't stop, or don't, don't stop using the gift that you were given. Because he says, he fast forwarded, he says actually in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, after Timothy's been leading for 40 years and he's going through a hard time, he says, fan into flame the gifts of God, Timothy. Fan it into flame because it's not been burning. It's been an ember, but it's not been burning. So there's a gift on the inside of you, fan it into flame. You had the impartation, you received something, but you stopped releasing it. When you stop releasing what you've received, guess what? Your fire goes out. You've received something in your life, right? Maybe someone's prayed for you. They've prophesied over you. You've had a word from God in some way. You've had something given to you. You know something was deposited on the inside of you. You've received something, but you've stopped releasing it. And as a result, your your fire has gone out. You can apply this to any area of life. You receive a graduation, a promotion at your workplace. You receive an elevation of sorts. You're you're leveling up of sorts in some way. And it's fun, right, for the first three months until you get a new manager in place. You don't like your job anymore. You receive the promotion, but you stopped releasing and stewarding the best version of yourself within that promotion, and now your fire for the, the job that you always wanted is burned out. It applies to every area of life, relationships. But most of all, this is a kingdom principle that cannot be shaken. It is a kingdom principle. Romans chapter 1 verse 11, Paul said to the church at Rome, he said, I long to see you, I want to come to you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. We're going to lay hands on every single person in this room this morning. We're going to believe for healing, and God's going to deposit something rich in your life this morning. I really believe that. Because let me say this, this, you're not living in a peacetime. You are living in a wartime. 
I'm talking about it, even spiritually speaking, you are living in wartime. It is not time to sit around and be a lazy, a lazy believer in your faith. It's, it's time to war for what you know is rightfully yours to live, the lifestyle that you are called to live. Paul said it in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, to live worthy of the calling. He said, as a prisoner of the Lord, I encourage you, who's not in chains, who's not a prisoner of the Lord, to live worthy of your calling. If I can be in prison while I'm in prison, encouraging you and releasing what I've received to you to live worthy of your calling, how much more can you who's not in prison? Do you see that? Paul had received so much from the Lord, he's in prison, and because he's received so much from the Lord, he's still releasing encouragement to the church while he's in chains, encouraging people who aren't in chains to live worthy of their calling. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, powerful. Yet, we're not in chains and we walk around like we are. We're not in physical chains, yet we walk, we walk around like we are spiritually shackled. We've stopped releasing what we've received. You're hearing this this morning. You know, I, I've been sharing, I shared this this week, this, this theme of receive and then release, receive and then release. In John chapter 20, verse 22, write this down in your, in your notes. Jesus is resurrected. He's resurrected and he's with his disciples. And it's before he ascends, obviously. He's a resurrected man. He's before he ascends. And it says... This it says, and when he had said this, he was talking to them about things to come, things that were happening. He says, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. It's one thing to be breathed on by God. God could have, Jesus could have said, you know, he breathed on them and it could, that would have been it. He breathed on them, he released something, and then he said, you have to receive it. In other words, there's still a responsibility on your end to receive it. He breathed on them. They could have walked away, right? God's breathing on a lot of us all the time, but we're walking away. God's speaking to us a lot of the time, but we're not listening. God's trying to get our attention, and we're running the other direction. He breathed on them, and then he said, now you can receive it if you want to. There are things that God will breathe on you that you will not receive if you are not open. There are things that God will speak to you that you will not receive if you are not open. There are things that God wants to do in and through your life that you will not receive if you are not open, if there is a wall in your life. You want more of God or more, uh, more to experience of God in your life. You want to experience more of God in your life. Maybe there's some walls in your life that are stopping you from having that experience. What are those walls? I don't know what those walls are, but what's stopping you from receiving? Because listen, you're one step away from the biggest change of your life and the only thing you have to do is receive. Some people, they can't receive the next thing because they have a poverty mindset. Not because poverty like wealth and money, but a poverty, I'm not worthy of it. When I get around people, I get jealous, I get bitter, and then I'm like, I start thinking I suck and I'm not worthy. And so you have this mindset that holds you back, and so you can't receive your graduation, you can't receive your promotion. God will not put you into your promotion if your mindset is the same, because you can't bring an Egyptian mindset into a promised land, because the giants will take you out. You have to change your mindset. Your mindset has to change. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The transformation has to take place on the inside, but it starts in the mind so that you can go to the place that you're called to go. Because God doesn't want you to self-sabotage anymore. And we self-sabotage our graduation. We self-sabotage our promotion because we don't let the mindset change. And we constantly produce all of these Ishmaels in our life. Ishmael was not supposed to be the promised son. Isaac was. But Sarah got a little bit annoyed with the delay. So let's just go, hey, sleep with my servant girl, Hagar. Let's produce an Ishmael. Because listen to me, your Isaacs in your life that were born of God and your Ishmaels will always fight. The thing that you're called to do and the thing that you're not called to do, they will they'll always be at war with each other. Every one of us in this room possibly has an Isaac and an Ishmael in their life. Isaac was the promise, the thing you're called to do. The Ishmael was the thing you produced on your own. 
And somewhere in, in you, there's like this war happening. You know it's the thing. It feels like it's the, the thing that is easy for you because you don't have to rely on God for it. But you know it's wrong and it's warring against the thing you know you're called to. Man, when the, when the receiver receives the ball from the quarterback, I mean, the, the receiver has to be in expectation, right, of where the ball's going to land. The receiver has to have anticipation where the ball's going to land. The receiver doesn't run on the field with his arms like this or his arms like this, right? There is an openness to receive. There is a responsibility on the receiver waiting for the quarterback's throw to open up his hands to anticipate where the ball's going to land, to keep his eyes uh, positioned in the right space, to watch his surroundings so he can connect with the ball. Listen, Jesus is your quarterback, and he's throwing passes at you all day long. But if you're not open to receive them, the ball's going by you every single time. And you're missing all kinds of touchdowns in life because you're not paying attention. This is why I never teach, you know, people, that I, I never say, you know, you lear learn to hear the voice of God. I say learn to recognize the voice of God. Because he's always speaking. You're always hearing. You're just not recognizing what you're hearing. He's throwing passes at you all day long, but because you're not recognizing where the ball's landing, you're missing touchdowns every single time. But I believe this is a different season for us. Acts chapter 3, verse 6 says, Peter, Peter and John were walking up to the temple to pray at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and there was a crippled beggar who needed healing, but he wanted money. Doesn't that speak to a lot of us? The things we need, we don't want. He needed healing, but he wanted money. Some of you, you need wisdom, but you want a new job. Some of you need to get your character right, but you want some sort of graduation and promotion, thinking that it will fix your character. Some of you want your debts to be paid, but really you need to manage your own money. What you Need is not always what you want. And Peter and John are walking up to the temple, and the beggar looks at Peter and John with expectation. And Peter said to the beggar, silver and gold, money I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Na Na Nazareth rise up and walk. You do not have, let me tell you this, what the world is looking for. You do not have what the world wants, actually but you do have what the world needs. The world probably doesn't want what you have, but you have what the world needs. They want money. They want fame. They want success. They want the next big thing. They want to, you know, have the promotion. They want the career promotion. They want to be the CEO. They want the status. They want the car. They want the house. They want all those things. You may not have what the world wants, but you definitely have what the world needs. And until you realize that, you are not going to be able to release it. Once you realize you have what they need, you'll be able to release what they need. Because you know what's in you. Man, I remember I was flying back on a plane once, and I'm almost done here. I was flying back on a plane in the Middle East, and there was this, I was sitting beside this Muslim lady. And I don't know how we got into this conversation. And we begin to have this conversation about the power of Jesus. The power, not, not religion, but the power of Jesus specifically. And the love of Jesus. Because most Muslims don't have a, a concept for a loving father. A loving father who loves me, who calls me son. Who I am a child of. Most Muslims don't have a concept for that. Most Muslims that I know that have encountered Jesus for the first time always say, almost every one of them say to me that when they first met Jesus, Jesus called them son or called them daughter. And there's a reason for that. Remember, Ishmael was the orphan in a sense, Ishmael was not the promised child. We can go, we can go here, we split the whole, but I'm not gonna do that right now. But I was talking to this this lady on the plane, and the love of God came up, the love of the Father came up, and the power of God came up. I said, Listen, I we can argue all day long. Let me just and I believe that you can experience it right now. I remember on the plane, I remember it was it marked me forever. I put my hand 
on her on the plane, asked her, can I put my hand on you? I believe God's going to touch you. And she literally, her body flailed back into the seat, like, like, like flew back into the seat, and she had this encounter with Jesus and began to weep on the plane. This is in the Middle East. And I remember her talking to me and telling me, like, like she's experiencing Jesus for the first time. It's real. It's not religion. She's like, what do I need to do? What do I do? Like, my family's going to, like, eradicate me, basically. You know, what, and what do you say to people like that? You say, hey, listen, I just believe that God is so good, he'll figure it away. <laughs> I mean, I don't live where you live. But the fact is that she had an encounter with God because somebody chose to release what was within them. We receive so we can release. For me not to do that when she were in this conversation is for me to, 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 to basically say, I want you to stay stuck where you are. For me to say, I don't have what you need. I definitely didn't have what she was looking for, but I had what she needed. She needed to taste, he needed to taste the reality of a supernatural God who loves her. Amen? Man, this is Mark chapter 3. I'm going to close with this. Mark chapter 3, verse 13. Afterward, Jesus went up on the mountain. And I'm, I'm jumping around because this is not really an a exegetical teaching today. This is not a, a preach today. This is, I'm preparing the ground because I believe God wants to do something very significant in your life this morning. So I'm just preparing some of the expectation. But I want to just bring this home with this chapter here in Mark chapter 3 verse 13 because it's the key, it's the key to receiving so that we can release what's within us to see God move around us. Jesus is calling his, his disciples up on a mountain. He called out the ones he wanted to go with him, and they came to him. And in verse 14, it says this, Then he appointed 12 of them and called them his apostles. See, he pulls these people in. Come close to me. Let's go to the mountain. Let's, let's spend time together. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull you in, and then I'm going to call you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to distinguish you amongst the rest. I'm going to call you my apostles. And they were to accompany him says in verse 14, and he would send them out to preach, giving them authority to cast out demons. They first had to receive from Jesus before they could release the authority and the power that Jesus gave them while they were receiving. The principle is intimacy first. If you want to grow in your relationship with God, intimacy first. Your relationship with him first. Spend time with him first. Receive from him first. I kept seeing this morning like this beautiful gift that God wanted to unwrap and give to you this morning. There's a, something so beautiful about this morning that he wants to unwrap, unwrap over your life and in your life this morning. I kept seeing new leaders coming from this house leaders budding some of you are leaders but you're just you're in hiding you're in hiding you're like you're like you're like you're you're there's like a wall in front of you people have approached you people have pulled on you but you've resisted let me just tell you the moment you stop resisting and start releasing is the moment you grow up a tree cannot grow if they're resisting their roots going deep for you to grow up, you have to release your roots down. And some of you, you've been resisting, resisting, resisting. You're only doing the bare minimum in your life in all areas. And you've actually resisted growth in your life. Because you've been held holding back on the inside. God doesn't want you to hold back in this season. He wants you to go. He wants you to move. He wants you to shift. I want you to stand up with me. I believe the Holy Spirit's going to move in a powerful way this morning. For some of us, we're just going to receive maybe a word from God. For some of us, we're going to receive, we don't know what we've received. We're going to receive a healing in our body. For some of us, we're going to receive just encouragement. We're going to receive strength. We're going to feel different. We're going to receive joy. I don't know what it is for you. But I want you to have an expectation to receive. All you need is an expectation, just like the, the runner, just like the receiver in football, is moving and running with an expectation to receive the pass. That's the only requirement that you have to have this morning. 
Maybe you need a breakthrough in your marriage. Maybe you need a breakthrough in your career. Maybe it's a breakthrough in in your body. Maybe it's something in your career. Maybe it's just personal. I don't know what it is for you. But I want you to have an expectation to receive this morning. I want you to have an expectation to, to receive something significant this morning. And so what we're going to do is, if you want to be a part of this moment, in just a few moments, in just a few moments, we're going to line up everybody in this room. And when we come by you, you may have a physical need, you may have a physical condition that you need prayer for healing in, we're going to pray for you. My wife and I are going to start, and then we're going to have uh, our ministry team follow and spend some more time, because we're going to be quick to get through everybody in this room. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, I'm going to have Matt help me coordinate, and we're going to start, or we're going to line up, how we're going to do is we're lining up people in the front, in the side, in the back. Okay, so if we can get some of the team to make two lines in the back and line them up. So what we're going to do, when you're ready, listen, this is not complicated. You don't have to be a part of this if you don't want to. Let me just remind you the most important thing that you could receive today is a relationship with the one who set, saved you before you were even born. He set you free. He died on a cross before you ever even needed him to die on a cross. He died on a cross, resurrected to give you new life. The most amazing thing you could receive today is to receive a relationship with Jesus Christ. To start that. It's not a religion. It's not a, a, a club that you join. It's simply just the family of God that you reconnect with because you lost the connection at birth because of sin. And Paul said in Romans chapter 10 that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you will be saved. It's simply just the starting point. It's simply align yourself with what's already been done. I say, Jesus, I believe you're God. I believe you raised from the dead to raise me to new life. I simply align my heart with the forgiveness that you've already paid over 2,000 years ago. When I do that, I'm stepping into the beginning of relationship with you. And if that's you in the room, this is the most powerful thing that you can receive this morning. But then we go up a level after that. And we deepen our faith. We deepen our root systems. We grow in our relationship with God. And what I'm talking about this morning is absolutely vital for that to receive and then to release. And when I say this, I'm going to say one more thing and then we're going to pray. The best thing you can do after this experience today is pray for somebody. Call somebody on the phone. Lay your hand on somebody. Encourage somebody. Release something of strength that you've received today. Activate it right away. When you do that, you grow. You know why? Because now God waters the seed. You received the seed. You planted the seed. And when you activate, you literally water the seed. And it grows. Something grows. Something grows. And I encourage you, maybe it's the grocery store, maybe it's the restaurant, I don't care where it is, do something with what you've received today. 